Sometimes you want to store more than one value in a variable and for that we can use vectors or arrays. Let's start with vectors. We're going to look at three different ways of creating a vector. We'll start with the new function. This creates a vector that holds unsigned 32-bit integers. To be able to put any values in the vector, we have to make it mutable. We can now push values onto the vector. Besides elements, number 1 in this case, a vector also has a length and a capacity. The length is the number of elements in the vector. The capacity is the number of elements that the vector can hold without reallocating. This vector has a length of 1 and a capacity of 4. That means we can put 3 more values into the vector before it reallocates. That means the vector has to find some new space in memory where it can fit all its current elements and have room for new ones. Let's add a total of 5 elements to the vector. The vector now has a length of 5 and a capacity of 8. If we added 4 more elements, it would have a capacity of 16. Besides adding elements, we can also remove elements. By calling the pop method on the vector, we're removing the last element that was added, in this case number 5. We can also use the remove method to remove an element at a specific index. To remove the first element, we will specify the index 0. This would remove the first element and shift all the other elements down. Vectors supports indexing. That means we can look at a specific value given an index. The value at index 0 is 2. That's because we removed the first value at index 0, which was 1. Because Rust has type inference, we don't actually have to specify that values is a vec of u32. We can remove the colon vec u32. Rust can infer the type based on the values that we push onto the vector. Two other ways we can use to create a vector is using the vec macro and vec with capacity. Let's look at the macro first. The vec macro works by giving it a comma separated list of values. We can now replace our previous declaration with this macro. And let's not forget to make it mutable. This is just a shorthand for what we were doing before. Rather than pushing every individual value, we can just specify it when we create the vector using the macro. If we run this, it will look exactly the same. Another way of creating a vector is using with capacity. So let's undo back to what we had before. And rather than using the new method, we'll use with capacity. Since we know that we're going to push 5 values onto the vector, we can specify the capacity as 5 up front. And now if we run this, we should see a slightly different capacity than what we had before. The capacity stays at 5 all the time. That means that there are no reallocations, which is a small performance improvement in this case. If you know the capacity up front, it's worth using with capacity rather than new. Arrays, unlike vectors, has a fixed size. That means you have to know the size before you can create one. The type of an array is written as square brackets containing the inner type and the size, and will initialize the values similarly to how we were using the vec macro. Since an array is fixed size, we cannot modify it in the same way by removing or adding values like we can with a vector. However, we can still look at values in the array. The last thing to talk about are slices. You might not want to move your vector or your array every time you pass as an argument. Instead, it might be worth passing a reference to one of these. However, instead of having to decide whether you want a reference to an array or a vector, you can take a slice. A slice looks almost like an array, except it doesn't have the size specified. Let's create a function that takes a slice as an argument. Now, rather than moving the array into the function, we can pass a reference to the array, which Rust will in turn coerce into a slice. 
And just like with arrays, we can look at any value given an index. If we change our array into a vector, this code will still compile. So if you don't specifically need a reference to a vector or a reference to an array, use a slice instead. Now you know about vectors, arrays and slices.